Let us now look at the next question of the IIT JEE Advanced 2017 paper and the question reads, we have been given that A, B, X and Y are all real numbers. So we have been given that all these four numbers A, B, X and Y are real and we have also been given that the value of A minus B is equal to 1 and also that Y is not equal to 0. And so with these conditions given to us, we have a complex number Z is equal to x plus i y. We have also been given that the imaginary part of this given quantity which is a z plus b divided by z plus 1 is equal to y. And so we have been given these two conditions or rather these two statements wherein z is equal to x plus i y a complex number and we have also been given that the imaginary part of a z plus b upon z plus 1 is equal to y. And with these conditions given to us, we have to check which of these four options are correct. Now note that here either one option can be correct or two or more options can also be correct. So we will have to examine which of these options is or are correct. So let's get started. Note that z is equal to x plus i y. And so if we look at this second equation given to us that is imaginary part of a z plus b upon z plus 1, then we can very well write this is nothing but imaginary part of a z plus b. Now z is x plus i y and so I can replace z by x plus i y and so I will get a into z that is a into x plus i y plus b in the numerator and in the denominator we are left with z plus 1. Now z is this so z plus 1 can be written as x plus i y plus 1. So we are now substituted so we have now substituted the value of z here in this given equation and so we will equate this to y as is given to us well now we focus on the quantity on the left hand side and so we retain i m which stands for imaginary part of this complex quantity and so we here write inside the bracket a x plus b first because a x plus b becomes a real quantity then what we have left is i a into y and so i can write plus i into a y. Now this is an imaginary quantity. So I will now separate the numerator as a sum of real and imaginary quantities. And so I will now take care of the denominator. The denominator is x plus i y plus 1. And so if I collect the real terms together, that is the real terms x and I 1 together. So I will get x plus 1 here. And then I will have an imaginary term i multiplied by y. So this becomes my quantity on the left hand side which I know is given equal to y. So let us now start simplifying this quantity inside the bracket. Now note that because we have a complex number in the denominator, we will first try to multiply the numerator and denominator by its complex conjugate. Now when the denominator is x plus 1 plus i y, the complex conjugate of this becomes x plus 1 minus i y. And so I will multiply the numerator and denominator both by the quantity that is complex conjugate of denominator. And so I will now write in the numerator I get ax plus b plus i into ay. So this quantity is preserved as it was. Then I will multiply this by the conjugate complex conjugate of the denominator which in this case becomes x plus 1 minus iy. And because I have multiplied the numerator by this quantity, I will also have to multiply the denominator by the same quantity. And I know that when a complex number of the form x plus 1 plus i y is multiplied with its complex conjugate, what I get is x plus 1 the whole square plus y square. So I have now multiplied the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator which gives me this real quantity in the denominator and of course this entire thing is equal to y. So the imaginary part of this complex number is now equal to y. Now note that here in the numerator we have these quantities given to us and so if we expand the numerator we will get a few terms. So let's expand the numerator and we will retain I am outside which is denotes the imaginary part of this complex quantity. And so if I multiply the real terms together I will get ax plus b. So this term multiplies x plus 1 to give us a real term. Similarly this 
imaginary part multiplies by this imaginary part and that gives us a real term as well because imaginary into imaginary gives us a real quantity and so here i multiplied by minus i will be minus i square which is nothing but plus 1 and so i will now write plus of 1 into a y into y which becomes a y square so here i will get a y square with a positive sign note that my job is not yet done because i have yet to multiply this imaginary term with this real term and then this imaginary term with this real term and so to continue that multiplication we will now perform ax plus b multiplied by minus iy so i will come out of the bracket and what will remain inside is minus of ax plus b so this will be multiplied by this quantity minus of y and so this minus comes here and so i will write a y multiplier here Note that our job is not yet done because we also have to multiply this imaginary term with this real term and so I will now multiply i a y by x plus 1 and so I will now get because i has been already taken out of the bracket I will get a y into x plus 1 and so I can now write plus x plus 1 the whole multiplied by a y and now I can close my bracket as I have taken care of all the terms in the numerator so I will close my bracket here now note that so this becomes the inner bracket and this becomes the outer bracket and in the denominator I have x plus 1 the whole square plus y square which is retained. And this entire term imaginary part of this entire term is equal to y. And so I now have to solve this given equation wherein I have the imaginary part of this complex quantity equal to y. So now we have this equation which tells us that the imaginary part of this complex quantity is equal to y. What we now do is we take the imaginary part of this complex quantity. So the term containing i is the imaginary part and so we can now write minus of ax plus b the whole multiplied by y plus x plus 1 into a y is equal to y times this denominator or rather if we retain this denominator on the left hand side then it will come here as x plus 1 the whole square plus y square. So we have taken care of the uh, imaginary part of this number and we have equated it to y as was given in the question. So now we have obtained this result. Now that we have obtained an expression for that connects a x b and y now we have to check which of these four is correct and so to perform that check what we will do is we will further analyze this given equation now how can we analyze this given equation further so that we can conclude which of these is the correct value for x so now continuing the solution further note that if i expand the numerator i will get a term such as minus of axy plus by or rather minus by because this minus carries over so we have minus by here note that then we have this term which has a positive sign and so we retain the positive sign and write the term as xay plus ay so this becomes xay plus ay and the denominator of course is x plus 1 the whole square plus y square which is retained And this entire term is equal to y as we have been given. So now note that x a y here cancels out the x a y over here and all we are left with in the numerator is a y minus b y. So the numerator I will write a y minus b y and in the denominator I will retain x plus 1 the whole square plus y square and this entire thing will be equated to y as is given to us. Now if we take this y common then a minus b is equal to 1 and so if we take this y common what we are left with is in the numerator we will have a a minus b multiplied by y and in the denominator we will have x plus 1 the whole square plus y square and this entire term is equated to y as is given to us. Now note that because a minus b is equal to 1 as per the condition given to us we will now replace a minus b by the constant 1 and so this a minus b will be replaced by 1. Note that if we replace a minus b by 1 then we will be left with y upon 
x plus 1 the whole square plus y square because a minus b becomes 1 and so this becomes y into 1 which is nothing but y and on the right hand side we have a y as well. Further because we've been given that y is not equal to 0 we can cancel out y from both these sides or rather we can divide both these sides of this equation by y which leaves us with the result 1 is equal to x plus 1 the whole square plus y square. So what I have done here well because y is non-zero I have cut y from here and here which leaves us a 1 over here and so if I take this denominator on the right hand side it will become the numerator and so we will have 1 is equal to x plus 1 the whole square plus y square. Now if you simplify this further you will get firstly you take y square on the left hand side so you get 1 minus y square on the left hand side. Then you are left with x plus 1 the whole square on the right hand side so this will be retained. Now note that from this we can get the value of x plus 1. Now if we take the square root on both sides we will get an x plus 1 on the left right hand side because you have taken the square root of this quantity and on the left hand side we will be left with plus or minus under root of 1 minus y square. Now this given result can be stated in the form of two separate equations in the following way. So the result that we now have can be stated as therefore x becomes equal to so now x is equal to minus 1 plus under root of 1 minus y square or we can also get x is equal to minus 1 minus under root of 1 minus y square. So from this entire analysis we finally obtain that x is either this quantity or this quantity and so the final result will be obtained by boxing each of these quantities. So any of these equations can hold true in case of the condition given to us and so we can now say that each of these are the possible values of x. So now we have obtained that x can either be minus 1 plus 1 minus y square under root or it can also be minus 1 minus under root of 1 minus y square and so we have the final result that x is either equal to minus 1 plus under root of 1 minus y square or it is equal to minus 1 minus under root of 1 minus y square. So each of these two are possible values of x. Now if in this set of questions if you look at the correct value of x then you will realize that b is one value that matches our obtained value so this will be one correct solution. Similarly, x is minus 1 minus 1 minus y square under root which coincides with this value and so we can write either b or d are the correct answers to this question when the options are in this order. So we have now obtained the value of x as minus 1 plus under root of 1 minus y square or minus 1 minus under root of 1 minus y square.